Mm. Kind of, we are real close and personal. Um, I want to go ahead and pre-apologize um, for the front camera. I know the back camera is better quality. However, I don't have that much storage and I just don't wanna have to do this whole video just to find out that it didn't record because I ran out of storage, but let's get started, okay. Hello, my name is Avery and I am currently a new grad as a occupational therapy assistant. I am three to four months into the game. And yeah, so one reason I want to say that I want to make this video was because any videos right now that are about OT are kind of um, older, like year-wise. And I'm not saying that it's any different, but I do want to give a new perspective because I know when I was in the program a year ago, I wanted some newer information. And so I just feel like, you know, why not just let it be me? Um, I do want to say that Anything that I reference will be based off my program. However, each program has to be accredited, so I feel like it will be resourceful to anybody that's within any state. I'm not gonna talk about like um, NBCOT or licensure process um, because it is very much state related and how CEUs and stuff. I will do a video later on, but also I wanna say that I definitely think I'm going to post more new grad post new grad content because last week I had got cut off from my PRN job and I realized like I don't have nothing to do. So I was like, well, why not just go ahead and film more of your life as a post grad because it wasn't that much information out there. And so, yeah, so once again, this basically is a video of information. I will definitely put a total of how long this video will be, it might have to cut like this off, this off because I don't know to the end, but yeah. So first I wanna talk about how did I get into OT? I was actually in a pre-nursing track. I had been in school for a long time. I had to pay for classes out of pocket, so I had to take courses one at a time. And I remember one day during COVID, I was at work and I, I mean, as a CNA, sorry, I was a CNA for eight years. And as a CNA in the hospital, I was just getting burnt out. I never knew burnout was real. I always heard of it, but I didn't think like it would be something I would have experience so when I experienced it I was just like I don't know if nurse is gonna be for me and just so happened that same day a therapist had put a patient into a shower for the first time most of the time in a the hospital these patients doesn't do not get showers because of their medical complexity or also because they're just really not there that long so you know that's the point of getting you here get you safe and get you to a rehab place or whatever better suits for you right and so I remember she got in the patient the patient got in the um, shower and I was always the type of saying that I did not like changing my patient's beds when they were in a room. If they was with therapy out of the room, I like to change a bed because I just hate having to reach over my patient. So I was in there changing the bed and I heard the patient just like well and crying. And so instantly I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta do paperwork. This patient must have failed. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What's going on? The therapist was like, oh nothing, she just took a shower. And I'm like, okay, like, she's crying i'm like is there something on i need to get her she was like no and she pushed me to the side she was like she hasn't had a shower in a couple of months because she's been in and out of the hospital and hasn't had like the endurance to do it and when i heard that i was like wait a minute i kind of like that bookie i like the fact of being a part of something that what i provide for them will go on to help them have a better life i love helping people and i just feel like nursing definitely when i experienced it through covid was more of management nurses are treated terribly and i'm not saying ot is treated any differently but i have personally seen how doctors have talked to nurses when the order say call me if something happened i'm just like booking oh what, what what's going on here so that's how i got in ot the next question i wanted to um answer was what is the difference between ota and ot and if you don't know what it is i hope you do because you're kind of like had to search this video but occupational therapy assistant is an 18 to two year program i think everybody's different depending on if you do full-time or part-time i did full-time so it was 18 months in occupational therapy you have to have a bachelor's then you get a master's as of right now some schools are going to a doctorate program and some are still staying as a master's it is not a requirement to get your doctorates but it is a requirement for physical therapy so i'm pretty sure it's going to be a transition it was supposed to happen in 2025 i believe but there was not really confirmation if they was well, going to go to that but that is a difference as far as job description wise we all do the same thing and i love to tell people i am an occupational therapist practitioner because we both do the same thing the ot and ota the only thing i cannot legally do 
is an eval. Okay, an eval. Now, for OTA, you do have to have every, you do have to have suit visits, and that's just basically saying every seventh visit you have to have an OT eval or do a session with the treatment to make sure this patient is on the the goals or changing the goals list. Um, that is basically suited to the patient, making sure that you know this patient still needs skilled therapy. So that is a a state law, a national board law, I guess you could say, but I do know for sure it's on the state thing for South Carolina under the um act that the seventh visit they need that they need to be seen by OT. Um it is more in depth for OTs. OTs do do a little bit more inside of like the goals and all that stuff. It is more longevity, but I do want to say OTAs, we are bomb. We are good at what we do. I know when I was going through school my teacher she would had an OT and one teacher had an OTA um had a, her had her ota license and my ot teacher was like you know when i was in grad school i really didn't hear about ota until i got to my job and i was like oh wait a minute what do they do and she was educated on it so please also know if you're an ot if you think about doing ot just know that we are just as you know we went through a good bit too not saying that we do everything but I know we are heavily taught to communicate with you guys because at the end of the day, you did create the plan of care and your name is behind it, but also we do sign the notes as well, so we do care, so just keep that in mind. I also already answered the question of how long is the program with. It is dependent, again, my program where I was at, if you did full-time, it's 18 months. If you did a two-year track that was basically part-time, then it was two years. Um, this is one question I got off of TikTok. Was the program worth it? I absolutely think the program was worth it. I found amazing friends that will be long term. Um, I found a career that definitely allows me to have a lot of freedom. Um, I enjoy the fact that we can be in a multiple of settings. So I'm actually adding on this next question is what settings can OTs be a part of? You can be a part of home health, acute care, um, skilled nursing therapy, inpatient rehab, hand therapy, aquatic therapy. Um, what is it called? Uh, uh, forgot like a the horse therapy. It's uh, I I can't think of the word, but you can do that. You can do outpatient therapy, school based therapy, which is something I didn't know about. You can we can be in the school systems. Um, what else can we do? We can do um, what else have I seen? Uh, I can't think of the word, but we I had learned that we can do construction not that construction um like let's say it's a patient home that need to be remodeled it could be ot's out there that basically help remodel homes um also have some ot's that spe that specifies on like playgrounds and making sure that uh, playgrounds are adaptive for everybody so really ot is so creative you can take it anywhere we had a, a seminar one time at our school where a lady mainly did yoga and taught it to the children of autism they had autism or were autistic i don't know what you prefer to say so i don't want to be respectful but um she taught those techniques give me just a minute so i'll be back okay i'm back um so yeah those are the different settings that we can be in so because of that i feel like it's very worth it um because you can go anywhere that your heart leads you what is your calling and i feel like everybody reason for ot isn't just they landed on it. It's always the meaning behind it. Or like your child had occupational therapy or, you know, you was a teacher and realized that you like this or, you know, how my story was where I realized, you know, I took for granted taking a shower every day and here this patient is who was able to get one for the first time in a couple of years. And the list goes on. So I definitely think it's worth it. Um, but I definitely want to make sure I express that I am very happy that I chose OTA versus OT first. I do and I think I want to do a bridge program later on, but um, I'm glad I was able to be introduced to OTA first because the debt, the, the debt to figure out what OT was at the beginning, I don't think I would have enjoyed that. I love the fact that I was able to do it in 18 months. I love OT and now I can decide if I want to go back and do OT or not. So um, the next question I want to answer is what is the pay for occupational therapy assistant? This is obviously state to state based. I am residing here in South Carolina. And I want to say, as far as my pay, I cannot give you an accurate salary because I am PRN. There were no current, well, currently there are no, um, sorry, currently, Lord, 
there were not any full-time position openings when I first took my boards. So I accepted two PRN jobs, one in the school system, one in acute care. And I am not comfortable with saying a specific number, but I will give a very much of a good range for the school. I am between 30 and $35 an hour. And for acute care, I am between um, 40 to $45 an hour. So, that is what I'm comfortable in it. You can pick a number between there, but that is basically the pay for PRN. There are pros and cons to PRN. PRN, you do make more money. However, they can cut you whenever you, whenever they don't need you, which is why how I ended up back into, you know, trying to take social media more serious because I do want to have something on the side and, you know, still be able to do OT, but I know PRN is not a, like, a permanent thing okay um one thing in the program i want to talk about and i have received a lot of questions about this on tiktok was um how can i formulate this question what do i need to have as far as my prerequisites like what grades specifically how well do i need to achieve agree what is the word achieve or whatever and anatomy of this so um one thing I did not take serious enough in um, in my prerequisite were psychology. We needed like three different types of psychologies and I could not stand psychology. I admire anybody that, can, that enjoys the mind, but me personally, I just do not like it. And I quickly realized that OT started in mental health. So there was no way around it. So I have grown to like it. I don't love it because it's so complex and I feel like I'm not helping someone no much as I need to because you have to look at so many different accolades. So. I do want to say for prerequisite, I would definitely take your site seriously. And specifically, I know anatomy and physiology is hard to people, but I feel like anatomy and physics is nothing compared to kinesiology. Kinesiology was a whole new world. Between eccentric contra contraction, concentric, isometric, isotonic movements, those took me by storm. Now, we did have one student in our class who had already had his bachelor's, and I think in kinesiology, and he also was a personal trainer, so we were blessed to have a student that could help us understand it more, and also we had the best um, teacher. His name was Barry Poole. He was a hand therapist world round. He's been on uh, several places doing seminars and hand therapy in different countries doing stuff. So we, I love the way he taught. He taught for different people's styles. If he was um, kinesthetic, if he was auditory, if he was visual, he made sure you understood it. But I want to make sure I express that you need to have a good base in anatomy of this. You need to have a understanding or at least an idea of what everything is and what i mean by that is um we're not going to go too deep into like the heart for like ot but you do need to understand the side effects of chf you do need to understand some techniques of how to help this paper with chfs and what i um or clpd and that can just simply be like okay don't take too hot showers because you know it's going to steam and your clpd cannot handle all that you need to sit down while you do it because we need to save as much your energy because if you run out of all your injury in the morning you're not going to want to do nothing the rest of the day because of all these other you know medical complexities that you have so you need to understand the basis of the body for this because when you get to kinesiology it's literally how the body moves and baby i still to today don't know how i pass a class but by the grace of god so yeah um another thing i wanted to answer was um what are some tips that you would give to people that are thinking about ot and whether or not they know it's for them you know if ot is for you um i know at my program they require us to do a career talk and this is where they basically see what your opinion was of ot what do you think ot is this is the pay in this setting these are some settings. what are you thinking about why did you want to do this um you know are you dedicated to this situation and i want you to know that when you do do the program you are like that is your full-time job so um the one thing I want to tell people whenever someone asks me is, how is your time management skills? Um, you need very good time management skills. For my program, for the full time, we had five classes and those classes were back to back. The homework was due back to back. The requirements was back to back. You will do some outside um, activities. Like we have um, did mobile meals where we took foods to people who are unfortunate and that was on us to fund for our guests we did bus trips to us for us to understand how you know people with disabilities need to access the bus and how um 
basically the process is so that when we have patients that do it, we at least have some idea. So there are a lot of outside activities that we have to do. So your time management skill of how you need to plan your homework, going to work and all that stuff will definitely be a pertinent thing that you need to have. Um, one thing I want to talk about, because I don't want to make this video too long. I think I want to cap it out at like 20 minutes um, is field work experience. So in field work experience, you are required, and once again, this is different, um, you are required to do two work, two field work experiences. Um, for us, it was 18 weeks, one nine week in pediatric, one nine week in adults or geriatric. And for us, our field work coordinator put us where we thought would best fit us, if that makes sense. Now, in the beginning of the year, she did like give us a thing of rankings of where we wanted to go based off of what we thought. But one thing I love about my field work coordinator is that she definitely put us in places that we need to be. You will also have two, no, three, yeah, three field work experiences that is just one week. And this is observation. And during this observation time, um, it's up to how comfortable you are. But I do recommend being hands-on in that time. You don't have to. You can literally sit there for the week and observe. But for me, I feel like it was very much beneficial for me to get out of my uncomfort zone, to be uncomfortable, and just go ahead and push myself and do it. So I got lucky because um, the place I went for my first week, basically, I went back there. So I definitely much love that but about if it works specifically so i want to talk more about the nine week because the one week you can survive there okay there's just one week of providing gas you will provide a gas going to that place we at my school they can send you up to i think an hour and a half to two hours or something about a mile radius of how far they going so my first place i had i am from swanborough south carolina i had to drive to spindale north carolina and i cannot stand that drive i'm not even gonna lie to you i don't care if it is 55 minutes i'm riding up to an hour i do not like driving for an hour i'm the type of person that when i find a job i need at least 30 minutes away from me that's just me but i still learned a lot at that place because they was very much specific on sensory needs so i learned a lot but i just hated the drive but once again the funds for that the food for that was all on me so make sure you save up for that but even more the nine week field work um you are going to progressively build your own caseload whatever your ot your ota is working that is what you're going to do if they work on a saturday you're going to work on a saturday they work saturday sunday you're going to work saturday sunday if they want to pull up overtime then they're going to pull up overtime because at the end of the day buki you're working under their license and they are going to be working with you, but you are going to be doing most of the work. Now, in the beginning, you're going to basically like oversee them, but progressively, you're going to be doing everything for free, 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week, okay? I'm going to stop this video right here because Darrell is calling me constantly, so I'll wrap this up in a minute. I'll call y'all right back. I mean, I'll return. Just give me a minute. Um, it'll work, yeah. So I was saying like, you know, basically you will have to do the same 40 hours or whatever they do. Um, you have to sponsor your own gas, your own food and all that stuff. So it's definitely something for field work, field work for you to um, save up for. I know the girl I was with, Charlotte, she um, was able to like work a little bit, but she did babysitting. I was a CNA at the time and I was not working because I had to do 12 hours as a tech and it just was not gonna work. It wasn't worth me doing 40 hours in field work and then turn around and doing hours at the hospital. It just wasn't worth my sleep or time. And I also wanna give grace because Darrell really did help me out during that process because I was trying to do both just because I felt bad. Not yelling in a common area, but okay. So, um, so I do wanna give thanks to that because I mean, I felt bad like I was saying, but Anyways, another thing I want to say about field work is even though it's free, please do not go in a go in there with the mindset of this is free, like you need to get what you get out of me. I'm sick and tired of it because you are basically selling yourself for a potential job. In my area, there are very limited jobs. So I'm very grateful at the fact that the places I did have for my field work experiences besides the school because they just wasn't hiring offered me a job i just chose not to go back because i wanted a different setting inpatient is fine i enjoy how much i learned especially from the neuro side but i just did not think as a new grad i would excel in inpatient because of how much not 
fear, but just uncomfortable I was with strokes. And this place I was at was heavy duty strokes. And I will probably go back there in maybe a year when I get a little bit more comfortable. But right now, I like the fact that I'm in a different setting that I didn't get to see and feel work. So I do want to mention that to make sure you still be very respectful of those people time because at the end of the day for that nine weeks straight, you are technically pitching yourself. And also, believe it or not, one bad student will ruin it for all because I literally heard it from them where one PTA was like, you know, I used to always say students until one of them basically, you know, say every day they hate it there. And like at the end of the, at the end of the day like that person has to spend extra time with the student. Like you have to stay over and make sure you read each note because once again, yes, I signed the notes, but my note says slash S, which is the student. And then my CI has to turn around and do it. So be very mindful of that. And then also in the field work process, it's just not working. You also have school work. <laughs> I thought this was beyond funny when they was telling us about it, that we also have school work during this time. And this is like almost weekly check-ins. We had to do um, a brochure. Uh, we had to do a project for them. I think this is really across the board for OT, if I'm not mistaken, but we all had to do a project like for the school system. I made um, Callie something that she requested. And if I have a picture of it, I insert it in here, but she requested for the kids that's like nonverbal a flip card. So it was like a picture of her and it said um, her name and then OT or um, stop with a stop sign. So I made that because it is something that she requested that would benefit her, which is literally what the project is for and then for my um inpatient my therapist is very i mean my ci was very hands-on with the c um cda patient she loves strokes but at the place i was at they required the patients to understand before they left the uh, the signs of um stroke which is b fast so most of the time if you have one stroke you're going to probably have another one it just depends on how well you take care of yourself so I realized when I was trying to teach some of the patients that were basically um, it's, had expressive aphasia, I was not getting across. I could not read lips. I could not understand what they were saying. So I went ahead and made digital cards of BFAS with the words, with what the like facial drooping looked like or what 911 looked like, along with what the symptom is called. And I basically had them match it to make sure they understood it. So. That's one thing that I did. Charlotte, I know what she did for inpatient because I was with her. She made a like fishing thing, which was great because a lot of those patients and inpatients does a lot of standing dynamic, standing balance things. So that is very much a good thing that she used and some of them were different weights. So I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I think that's all the questions I had from TikTok, especially. Um, I can't really think of anything right now. I know after this, I think I'm definitely going to do maybe twice a week vlogs, possibly of postgrad, just because I'll be so bored when I don't be at work and I really need to find some more stuff to do. And then I potentially may do the bridge program to OT. I'm not sure yet, but I know it's required for me to be an OTA for a year. So yeah, I guess we're going to end the video today. I think I made it within like 25 minutes of a video. So I'm very proud of that. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And that's it. Bye.